So welcome to another episode of the GI unit um, reviews and tutorials. Um, today I'm going to be doing liver and its association with GI. I want to start with the hyperbilirubinemias, the Gilbert, Krigler and Jar, and Dubin Johnson and Roder syndrome. I'm going to move the rest out of the way just for the sake of simplicity. So the enzyme that is responsible for causing problems in these uh, these pathologies are UDP glucuronyl transferase. Other than the last two, Dubin Johnson and Roter syndrome, these are not caused by UDP glucuronyl transferase. If I asked you what is the pathology between two, Dubin Johnson and Roter syndrome, what kind of hyperbilirubinemia would you say it is? Is it conjugated or unconjugated? It's definitely conjugated hyperbilirubinemia for Dubin and Roter syndrome. And what kind of defect is responsible for this type of hyperbilirubinemia? It's defective. It's defective uh, excretion. Defective excretion that is um, that is the main problem between these two conditions. Now there is four types of uh, hyperbilirubin conjugated definitely which is you know metabolized by the liver unconjugated which hasn't been metabolized by the liver and there is direct and indirect so what is direct and what is indirect direct is water soluble and which can be converted in the gut bacteria to urobilinogen which can be picked up by the kidney which we we can test uh, when when we if we had to test for um, urobilinogen in in urine it can be tested but indirect one is the one that is not water soluble so so that's another important aspect among other hyperbilirubinemias, there is hepatocellular cancer, there is obstructive, and there is hemolytic. Of these three, which two is going to cause um, conjugated hyperbilirubinemia? That's right, hepatocellular and obstructive is going to cause. Uh, conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, but hem hemolytic is going to cause unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Anything that can reach the liver is going to be conjugated. Anything that has you know, trouble reaching the liver or it will spill into the blood before it reaches the liver is going to be unconjugated. So that's that. Moving on to the next topic, which is biliary cirrhosis. Now, biliary cirrhosis, um, I'm not going to talk about everything about biliary cirrhosis. The one thing I want to talk about is primary, bili 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 primary biliary cirrhosis and secondary biliary cirrhosis. Now, there is one antibody which causes primary biliary cirrhosis, and what is the name of that antibody? It's called serum mitochondrial antibody. What about secondary? What kind of problem is going to cause secondary biliary cirrhosis? Secondary can be caused by anything. Um, if there is stasis, if there is, um, if there is um, butt curie, which can lead to secondary or any kind of virus, hepatitis B, is, can cause secondary biliary cirrhosis. Um, since we're talking about hepatitis B, I want to mention that um, I want to mention that that hepatitis B can cause um, subclinical disease. So if someone gets in, you know, let's say, let's say the vineyard says that a nurse was um, putting an injection on a patient with hepatitis B and she accidentally injects herself with 
the same needle. What kind of disease she's going to have? She can have a subclinical disease. Um, hepatitis B can be subclinical and in other cases it might not be sub subclinical. If hepatitis B is chronic, then they're going to have increased um, surface antigen and also they can also have increased um, window window period enzyme, the, the, the C1, HBC, is going to be increased. So they're both going to be increased in chronic hepatitis B. Now moving on, actually another thing I wanted to mention when I talked about uripic leucronal transfer is in terms of gilbert crigler najar is that it's uripic leucronal transfer is, that's the name of the enzyme, what is one drug used which is going to cause this um, this this enzyme to be not produced in babies or we're just going to give a huge problem when it when it's um, given to to uh, to mothers who are pregnant what's name of the name of the drug the name of the drug is chloramphenicol okay so I'm going to write that down What about acetaminophen? What kind? It's also a liver enzyme which is going to cause acetaminophen toxicity. What kind of enzyme is going to cause uh, this toxicity to become grave? Is it uribic glucuronyl transferase? No, it's glutathione. So these little things can get to us. You know, they're easiest of clue questions, but these are just facts that we have to be sure that we know. Anyways, moving on to other, other things, for example, uh, alcoholic cirrhosis and malaria body. Um, malaria body can be seen in alcoholic cirrhosis. In fact, malaria body is seen in, 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 in just liver cells in general. They're seen in liver cells. So it's not specific to anything. It's not specific to hepatocellular carcinoma or anything that it's going to be specific to that, but it's, it's really not. So Miller body is just the fact that um, there is, inside the liver cells, there is some sort of... Uh, a substance that's that's accumulating in the cytoplasm that that's that all miliary body is it can be alcoholic it can be hepatocellular carcinoma it can be any any of that um, so that's why I put down alcoholic hepatitis here hobnail appearance is when it's liver cirrhosis when it's like the liver is really really the liver is really, really, uh, in, um, it's damaged and you can kind of see the hobnail appearance. I would try to look for a picture. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I guess I don't have it right now. But um, that is hobnail. It's just that the liver is just, it just it looks like nails, hobs and hobs, hobs of nails in the liver. So that's that's hobnail appearance. Um, I talked about hepatitis B having subclinical disease, um, chronic active hepatitis. I also talked about that, and warfarin and cimetidine. Cimetidine is a P450 in inhibitor. So if there someone is taking a warfarin and they're given cimetidine, their levels are going to go up. So that's another thing that needs to be remembered. Other uh, other associations or other diseases that I wanted to talk about in, in relation to liver is primary sclerosing cholangitis. Um, this is the one that's going to cause the beaded appearance of the of the bile ducts inside the liver, but also um, its association with uh, ulcerative colitis, which can give rise to secondary biliary cirrhosis, is also very important to remember. 
Hepatic venography can be used for diagnostic butt carry syndrome, so that's that's another aspect that I want to talk about. So that's about it. And also if there is obstruction of the gallbladder neck, only then it's called cholecholithiasis. Um just wanted to throw it out there because I always get confused with that with that term. Um, cholecholithiasis, but it's exactly when it's exactly when it's exactly when the gallbladder uh, neck is being trapped. Other things I wanted to talk about was primary sclerosis versus biliary. I already talked about it. Hepatic neography, I already talked about it. Ammonia trapping in the kidney. This um, is a way of trapping ammonia. It's, it's, it, it's, it, I will talk about it in colon. When I do colon, I'm going to talk about how ammonia trapping and how using lactulose is very similar when it comes to ammonia trapping in the kidney and ammonia trapping in the colon. So please uh, watch that video if you want to talk, if you want to know about ammonia trapping. Until then, um, good night.